Welcome to Logic and Interactive Systems. Many of the projects we might build with Touch Designer require that we make some logical decisions in our networks. Let's look at some foundational ideas that we can use for applying and using logical operations with chops. To get started, let's add a pattern chop here in our network, and this will be a stand-in for any incoming data. Now let's turn down the length of this to say 10 samples. Let's make it viewer active and turn on the dots per sample. Now, one kind of traditional computer science approach that we might use would be to start with the math chop. With our math chop, we might say use our integer parameter, set that to ceiling, and this is great. This looks like exactly what we might be after. If we're looking for any values or converting our incoming values to being true, if they're greater than zero, this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and make one change to our pattern to verify that this is behaving the way that we expect. Let's turn our amplitude up to two. Aha, well, it looks like we have a condition here that doesn't quite match what we expect. And in fact, we can constrain this with a limit chop. So let's add a limit chop here. Let's go ahead and set our type to be clamp and let's clamp in a range of zero to one. Now we have values that are one or true if they're greater than zero. Now this is a great way to solve this problem, but in fact, we can also use the logic chop to solve this particular problem. If we connect our pattern here to our logic chop, we'll notice that this doesn't quite look like it's behaving right away. And what we need to do when we're working with a multi-sample chop is to head over to the common page and turn off time slicing. Now this is the kind of behavior that we're after. And in fact, whenever we need to say convert something into so, uh, just a true or false representation of its data, this is a great way for us to get started. Now, what other types of logical conditions might we need to think about? Well, let's go ahead and add something in from our palette. So we might, we might grab, say, the audio analysis component. And out of the audio analysis component, I want the low, mid, high, and kick channels. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a select chop here. And in our select chop, let's actually just make sure that we've identified only those channels. So we have low, mid, high, and kick. Excellent. Now here we might think about how do we mask these channels? So uh, to do that, we could start with say a constant chop. We might go ahead and capture the channel names in our constant chop. We can connect this to the first input. We head over to the snap page. We can take a snapshot of those values. And then we can just turn those, say, back down to zero because we don't actually want their values, just their names. Now, to kind of mask out these channels based on the conditions that we have in here in constant one, we could use a math chop. And our math chop, we could connect both our select and our constant one to the math. We could combine these chops by, say, using multiplication. And now, only when the value of our constant one here, channel low is one, do we allow the values from our select chop to pass through? Now, this is great, and this might be exactly what we need, but let's imagine that our constant represents a controller. So this is, say, controller one. What happens if we have, say, two controllers? So now we have two different controllers that need to provide some information about the status of whether or not we're allowing this channel to come through. What might that look like? Well, let's add a logic chop here into our network and connect these constant chops to it. Now, here we might think about combining our chops with the OR operation here uh, from our logic chop. Well, what does that mean? That means that the low channel in either controller one or the low channel from controller two could be true. And if either controller one or controller two are true, then we have a one value, we have a true value from our logic operation. And here we might connect this up and we can now see that we've reached some or agreement. So either controller one or controller two say that it's okay for this value to come through. Another type of condition that we might run into here is an and condition. So let's go ahead and make a copy of our logic chop and let's change this from or to and. So in the and condition, what we're looking for is agreement between controller one and controller two. So here, both controller one needs the low channel have a true value and controller two's low channel must be true in order for us to have a true. This is great. And this can covers many of the types of scenarios that we might run into. And this is excellent for, say, just single channels. But what happens if that is a, say, multi-sample chop? Well, let's go ahead and add another constant chop here into our network and set up that idea. So let's call this, say, stream one. And we might add, say, four channels to this. 
And let's then connect this to a shuffle chop. And in our shuffle chop, let's go ahead and make sure that we use the swap channels and samples method. Let's make sure that we can see our dots here and let's make a copy of this so we say have stream two. All right, now let's also add a logic chop here into our network. Let's connect both shuffle one and shuffle two here to our logic and it looks like something is not quite right again. And that's because remember, we need to head over to the common page. When we're working with multiple samples in a channel, we need to make sure we turn off time slicing. Excellent. So now we wanna combine these channels. Let's head back to our logic page and here we're gonna combine the chops with or again. Here, our constant stream one, its first sample could have a true value or the first sample in stream two could have a true value and logically this would be a true uh, condition. Now this is great, this follows the same logic that we saw above, but this now works in uh, a situation where we're working with a multi-sample chop. What happens then if we wanna think about an AND condition? So let's go ahead and make a copy of our logic chop. And this time we'll combine our channels with AND. Oops, we'll combine our chops with AND. Excellent. Now we need to have agreement between our two streams. In this case, both must be true in order for this logic chop to be true. Now, this is wonderful, but how about we think about this in the kind of constraints of a real world problem? Well, what might that look like? Let's say, for example, that we have two pieces of geometry. And let's start with, say, a sphere here. And we've got a sphere. We'll connect this to, say, one geometry component. And we'll connect this to another geometry component. And I want to know if the position of my geometry component uh, here, my sphere one, and in fact, we'll use two spheres in this particular situation, I wanna know if this sphere is inside of this second sphere. So let's go ahead and make this one tiny. We can turn this radius down to say, just maybe 0 0.1. So I wanna know, is sphere one inside of sphere two? How might we do this? Well, we can do this with a few simple operators. Let's start by adding a object chop here in our network. So we'll grab an object chop. We'll use the object chop to go ahead and grab uh, our geo one or our sphere one as a target, head over the output page. Let's grab just for right now the measurements. We're gonna copy paste. We're gonna do the same operation here for geo two and we have its measurements. Now we'll see here as we move, say uh, this uh, sphere around, right? We have a, a new positional value here. And what we need to do is we need to compute the distance from the center of our first sphere from the center of our second sphere. That's easy for us to do. And in fact, we can use a math chop to do that. Let's go ahead and combine both object one and object two. Let's take the combined channels. We can subtract these values. Oops, excuse me. Let's combine our chops. We can subtract these from one another. And after we've subtracted them, let's go ahead and add another math chop. And with this math chop, what we'll do is we'll compute the length. So here we'll combine our channels and we'll compute the length of this vector. This now tells us the distance that our smaller sphere, our geo one, is away from the center of geo two. Excellent. Now we have just one other thing to do here and that is to try and understand when we've exceeded the boundary of what's happening here for geo two. And we might do that with a logic chop. So we'll add a logic chop here to our network and this time what we'll do is we'll look for a condition when we are outside of our bounds. We'll be off when we're outside of the boundaries that we've set up here. Let's head over to Geo2, let's grab its scale parameter, bring it over to our logic chop, and apply that as the max value for our bounds here, so bounds max. Now what we'll see is we'll see that this will remain true as long as our smaller sphere stays inside of our larger sphere. So as soon as, say, we move further away, once we're outside of that boundary, we've moved to off and we know that we're no longer inside of our first sphere. Now, that's a relatively simple way to think about how we might use something like distance, but it's also an important consideration for how we think about logic because we use these types of logical operations to convert things like distance and location into values that are only true and false all the time. There's lots more to say about logic, but this is a great way for us to get started.